2016 had an abundance of great anime, many soaring in popularity such as Mob Psycho 100, Konosuba, Ray Zero, and Uran Ice. However, with so many great shows, some had their leg dimmed in comparison, while a couple shows I'd argue were among the best anime of the year and are highly overlooked. Here's my list of the top 10 shows not in the spotlight of 2016 that I recommend you consider checking out if you haven't already. Many of these shows will have a narrower appeal than the most popular shows of 2016, so this is by no means a must-watch list, but if any of these shows sound interesting, I don't think they will disappoint. Concrete Revolution, on the other hand, is a show I wholeheartedly recommend to everyone. Its second season finished up this year, and it might be by far my favorite anime of the year. The show took substantial risk when it immediately threw the viewer into chaotic alternate Japan, consisting of aliens, yokai, beasts, superhumans, androids, and a plethora of other beings. Many viewers were probably deterred by the first two episodes, which quickly established that the show wouldn't even be following chronological order, or slowing down to explain. In an interview, the main writer of the series, Sho Ayakawa, details his partnership with the director Seiji Mitsushima, and of how after working together on past projects like Evangelion and Full Metal Alchemist, they finally were able to team up and make this original show. He describes how he was basically given free reign to write the complicated script he desired, which clearly shows how passionate and understanding Kanrivo is. The story takes place in a world full of strife and moral ambiguity, which protecting the peace has taken priority over protecting freedom and justice. Conrivo focuses on the members of the Superhuman Burrow, tasked with not only protecting superhumans, but also subduing them. The main character Jiro, however, leaves the Burrow in the first episode, still admiring the ideals of justice once represented by superhumans. The show throws ideals in opposition, as it constantly hammers in the idea that there is no clear, one-cut right answer. Despite the moral ambiguity, Jiro stands as unwavering as Lelouch from Kogias, which should raise the question, if Conrigo has many similarities with Kogias, although being much more realistic, why does it have an ounce of its popularity? But let's take a quick step back from Conrivo and look at the more followed show Occultic 9, which has a similar negative reception of often being criticized for its fast pace. Occultic 9 was originally a light novel written by the author of Steinsgate, and the scriptwriter for the anime is Noboru Takagi, who worked on the Bakano and Dorora anime. I would argue that fast pacing is one of Takagi's strengths, and he's clearly been adapting light novels that fit his strengths with Occultic 9 being no exception. The criticism then toward the pacing does not make sense to me, especially when Bakano is highly praised. If anything, I would like to see talented writers take more such risk. These shows have interesting characters and dense worlds that basically act on their own accord. These elements are often more confusing than anything else, and might not seem to serve a purpose, yet they're still interesting and cool. In addition, when one gains perspective by either looking up information about it, or rewatching the show, these elements often come together to form a rich tapestry. For example, when I learned that many of the events in Khan Revo paralleled historic events from post-war Japan after reading one of Geek Corner's post-episode recaps, I gained even more appreciation for the show. I'll be honest, most of Khan Revo flew over my head, but the experience of being lost in the show was incredible, and gives me the confidence to say this show will be my favorite of the year once I rewatch it. However, that is enough rambling on about Kanrivo, because I still have two more favorites from the year. Tankatsu DJ Agitaru and Space Patrol Luluko are two shorts that are both practically perfection, delivering upon strong simple themes with no excess. However, I'll have to place Tankatsu as a close second to Luluko, since for some reason I value the love of a middle schooler more. Nonetheless, Tankatsu DJ deserves just as much love. Being a show about music, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the soundtrack is spectacular, it works great as a standalone. In combination with watching the show, however, is an audio utopia. Using audio cues, beat, and the atmosphere, the music becomes essential to the show. The show is also juicy on the inside, as the narrative is like taking a bite of a condensed hero's journey. Agitaro's drive to both become a DJ and to take pride in his family business is incredibly motivating, and his relaxed, upbeat attitude releases as much anxiety as what a tonkatsu meal or laying back to chill music. While Luluko will warm your heart, this show will cool you down. Another inspiring or cynical show depending on how you look at it was Girlish Number, which put its focus on the voice acting industry. Girlish Number falls somewhere between New Game and Shirobako on the spectrum of cute girls working in an industry. Its approach to the voice acting business did not go into near as much depth as Shirobako did with the whole anime industry, but its approach certainly was not as lighthearted and as rose-tinted as that of New Game's. It takes a bit of a cynical approach by portraying many of the industry's flaws, but does so to overall deliver a message similar to the one found in Shirobako. Despite the anime industry having poor conditions, People continue to work in it because it's what they love doing. Of course, unlike Shirobako, the majority of girlish number is just Chitose being the queen of smugness. Nonetheless, any show that is slightly similar to Shirobako automatically receives my appreciation. If you strip away the action from Mob Psycho 100, leaving only the humor, you're basically left with the disastrous life of Psyche K. The show follows the Esper Psyche K, who is practically a god, being able to read minds, teleport, and make objects out of nothing. However, his limitless powers serve more as an inconvenience to him, as his only motivation is to live a quiet life. With no overarching plot or conflict, this series works best in the brisk 5 minute chunks which each episode releases in. This show never failed to make me laugh each episode, and for that, I can't recommend it enough. Speaking of lethargic characters, Tanaka Kun is always listless is a much more relaxing comedy that I feel like I can relate to a bit too much. Tanaka is too lazy to do anything, which is a synopsis that sounds as boring as a hero who defeats villains with one punch. However, surrounding a lethargic character with obstacles and a cast of energetic side characters causes that character to do absolutely anything to avoid exerting energy. Instead of opening up his umbrella, Tanaka Kun would rather attempt to develop 
develop a force field, and his solution to walking is relying on his friend Oda to carry him almost everywhere, which is probably one of my favorite character dynamics in anime. This form of comedy works in Psychic K, and it bounces off Tanaka's personality even better by creating a soothing atmosphere. Another comedy show that I enjoyed was Kiss Him Not Me. The show is a reverse harm from the perspective of the Fujoshi main character Seri Numa, who is obsessed with coupling together both real and fictional males. It's probably only the second shoujo show I've seen, which makes it both very refreshing and an indication that I really need to broaden my taste. The romance involving attractive guys and a very attractive female lead is typically something I don't see, but apparently might be a bit cliché. However, the show is unique in that it takes a center focus on the Fujoshi aspect of Serenuma. Her desire to see male-to-male -male romance from the sideline becomes complicated as they begin hitting on her, and later it becomes even more convoluted when the lesbian character Nishina joins the competition, with a Fujoshi connection to Serenuma giving her an edge. For the most part, this is just a fun romantic comedy, but being a series written by a Fujoshi about a Fujoshi, there's definitely a little nuance underneath it all. Regardless, this is out of my expertise, so I'll defer to my friend Zorko Bunny's blog post, which go into more depth on the subtle details around the relationship between Serenuma and Nishina. Flip Flappers was another one of the best shows of 2016, and although personally I have more respect for it than I enjoyed it, something about Izetta being more popular just doesn't sit well with me. Every episode of Flip Flappers is a fantastical adventure which throws one into a brand new world every episode. Its adventures are as energetic as the ones in Space Dandy, and it honestly might have raised my expectations for Mario Odyssey a bit too high as the vibe I got from the trailer was to be able to jump into one of Flip Flapper's worlds and explore it myself. The only problem with the show might be delayed gratification from each episode, as often each world has to be developed before being wrapped up neatly with a final act. The two main characters didn't resonate with me much either, but they're still well-developed characters with adorable interactions. I can't get this show credit enough by gushing over it, so if you're still unconvinced, Anime Every Day has a great video on the show. If Flip Flap is a bit too highbrow for you, but you're still looking for a show with cute girls in action, I fear you might suffice. The show is pretty dumb, but is entertaining regardless. Of course, I've recently insulted Izetta, which is similarly a dumb show with cute girls in military action, but the show is a non-ironically serious fantasy World War II drama full of bloodshed and politics that I just cannot suspend my disbelief for. While I fear it just accepts how ridiculous it is for high school girls to be manning a battleship, and just rolls with it as they strategize how to sink other vessels, and discuss how to overcome crises such as running out of toilet paper. It's well paced, never lingering too long, and it all comes together in an overarching narrative about how other ships are mysteriously going rogue. In my opinion, High Fury is really one step above Hayzetta, but that is the difference between being entertained throughout the whole duration of the show versus being slightly annoyed at times. Assuming you aren't tired of cute girl shows, Scorching Ping Pong Girls is another show you should check out. However, unlike High Fury, which had minimal sexual fan service, Scorching Ping Pong Girls has very overt fan service that might be off putting. Characters have orgasms with each stroke as obscene amounts of sweat make their clothes contort to the curves of their bodies. Despite that, as a person who isn't easily phased by hand fisted fan service, I found this to be a highly enjoyable sports anime. The main character, Kyori, is often criticized for being a flat character defined only by her desire to feel her heart race playing table tennis, but this characteristic meshes perfectly with the show's blatant fan service. Kyori having her heart race during a match is synonymous with sex, and although it might just seem like unnecessary fan service, in this case I beg to differ. Every match Kyori plays in highlights just how fun table tennis is, as she not only makes her own heart race but her opponent's heart too. Although the show is weaker in the early episodes, with it often being no more than a below average cute girl show, entertaining table tennis matches each episode make it palatable. The fluid animation, electronic dance music soundtrack, and each character's heart in every match keeps the show energetic and fun. In addition, the latter half of Scorching Ping Pong Girls gets significantly more engaging when two opponents with a compelling backstory are introduced, resulting in a couple of very intense matches. Overall, this is a fine show, but I only recommend it if it sounds like it's up your alley. Now that's only 9 shows, but I'm hard pressed to choose a 10th recommendation. I could have easily given it to Rakugo, but I feel like the majority of anime YouTubers have already recommended it. And I already cheated with flip clappers. I certainly haven't watched every show either, so I may have missed a couple well hidden gems. Instead, though, I want to quickly list off my personal top 10 favorite shows from 2016, which were in descending order My Hero Academia, Space Patrol Luluko, Concrete Revolution, Tonkatsu DJ Akagitaru, Kanusuba, Grimgar, Tabu Tattoo, Mob Psycho, Girls Number, and Yuri Nice. I absolutely recommend all these shows, except for Tabu Tattoo, which is a show I expect no one to enjoy as much as me or even like. Anyways, thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more videos, consider subscribing. Feel free to discuss my awful taste in the comments or even comment. Compliment it if you so dare.